What's going on everyone? It's Jacqueline here from Nothing But Tech. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about the MacBook Air. So I attended the launch for this a couple weeks back and I've been using it every single day since. So in this video, I wanna give you guys a general overview uh, from both a student perspective and an editor's perspective, but I definitely wanna make more specific videos as an editor only using it like that or as a student. So if you wanna see that, just let me know with a comment below. But yeah, enough talking, let's dive right in. The old MacBook Air is a computer that I see everywhere, from the coffee shop to my friends. I just feel like it's the most used Mac for the general consumer. But it has been in really, really serious need of a refresh, if we're being honest. Uh, and here is the refresh, this is it. Do I think that this is the refresh that people were asking for? No. But do I think that it's a really great product? Yes. So if you do your research and you decide that this is a product for you, and then you hand over a large chunk of your money to Apple, I think you're gonna be pretty happy with it. Here's why. It has a gorgeous aluminum build, which is recycled, so you can feel like you're helping the environment. And it has a metal hinge, a tapered design, meaning that the front is super thin. At 2.7 pounds, it is really light, and it's an ease to take on day trips or anything that requires you carrying it around all day. I'm coming from a 15-inch MacBook Pro, so I honestly do not even feel this in the bag. It has a total of three ports. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a USB Type-C config and a headphone jack. Thank gosh. Coming from a MacBook Pro, I miss having the charge port on either side and the flexibility that comes with that. But I also use a MacBook and the second USB Type-C port is a huge improvement. All right, some other things to note about the build is it has the new butterfly keys. So I'm actually a huge fan of these. Um, I've been using them since their inception on both the MacBook and then the MacBook Pro. So I'm extremely used to them, and I'm also a really fast typer on low travel keys. But I think that even if you hate them, you will get used to them. I definitely do not think that that's a deterrent. The past versions had an issue where if dust got underneath the keyboard, it would kind of brick the entire device. Not a good thing, obviously. But the new ones have a new protective film underneath the keys, which means that the sound is gonna be a little bit more damp and also dust should not be an issue. Obviously only time will tell, but from using it, feels pretty good. And I honestly think that it's a really great keyboard with the really wide keys. It's a pleasure to type on and edit on. I think you're gonna be happy with it if you give it some time and an open mind. The trackpad on this computer is great too. Force touch and even clicks throughout make it a dream to use. It is massive, but the palm rejection is a 10 out of 10 experience. Gestures for editing especially work really well on here. And it's just like a really nice trackpad experience. A lot of the Windows laptops that I test have pretty good keyboards, but the trackpad is kind of where they fall apart. And Apple has just been doing trackpads really well. So you're gonna be really happy with it. Also, another addition here is Touch ID. So um, when you compare this to the MacBook or the 13 inch non-touch bar model, this is the only one that has Touch ID. It's a nice improvement, so much faster than typing in your password and it just feels pretty intuitive also. In terms of battery life, I'm getting a full day of emailing, watching videos, note taking, and presentation creation. I bet it would be more if I kept the brightness lower, but the screen isn't all that bright. More on that in a sec. But that causes me to use the screen at about 90 to 100% brightness most of the time. That definitely takes a hit on the battery. Now, if I throw in some video editing on Final Cut Pro, uh, it definitely gets cut by like an hour, but I'm still getting pretty decent usage. And in that Final Cut Pro, I'm doing like 4K video and stuff. And the most asked question that I've gotten since I've gotten this computer and started using it is, can you edit in Final Cut Pro? And the answer is yes, you can. It's a little bit stuttery and there are some drop frames, but it's definitely manageable. If you wanna see a full video on that, just let me know with a comment. Okay, so the screen. Vivid, color accurate, sharp, and dim. Those four words paint a really clear picture of the screen. The screen gets bright enough for every environment, even outdoors, but in order to accomplish that, you have to pump it up to 100% brightness. On my other laptops, I always found myself using them at about like 60 or 70% brightness, so having to always use that 100 is definitely something that I noticed. I don't think it's like a deal breaker by any means, but it would be nice to have a little bit of a brighter screen. It's viewable in almost every single condition, but it definitely, uh, takes a toll on the battery life that you always have to use it at a really high brightness. Other than the brightness issue, this screen is a major, massive improvement over the old MacBook Air. It's like when you go to an eye doctor as a kid and you feel like your vision is pretty good, but then they throw a prescription in front and everything just looks so much clearer. That's like what the screen is. It's night and day. I honestly don't know how we use the other one for such a long period of time, but the run display in here means that all your content is sharp, and uh, text on a white background looks really crisp. It's just, it's really good. I would say it's like comparable to the 13 inch uh, MacBook Pro screen, just a little bit less bright. Yeah, so the story here is that Apple does displays really well. 
Uh, the bezel is a bit thicker surrounding the screen, but I don't think that you're going to notice it that much. And it's a black bezel this year and not silver. Again, another improvement. All right, so lastly, performance. I'm a little bit apprehensive to dive into this because it's just like a dumpster fire of people saying the performance is like terrible. Uh, and it's really, it's not. So it has a Y series chip, which means in theory, it should be really bad. But the Geekbench scores actually places really uh, closely to the MacBook Pro 13 inch no touch bar model. Uh, and honestly, I don't love looking at like uh, specs and Geekbench scores and stuff like that because I really think it comes down to real world use. And the story here is it's good. Um, I'm able to web browse, I'm able to edit photos, um, edit in Final Cut with some stutters, but when you have better performance mode turned on, it's really good. Um, my good friend Craig Adams made a full video about editing on this, so I'm gonna leave that in the description if you wanna check that out. I'm also gonna go through my editing process on here in a future video, but I honestly think that performance, especially even on this base model, is acceptable. Um, one thing that I would suggest that you do though, if you're gonna pick this up, is upgrade the storage. At 128 gigabytes, this is just not big enough, especially if you have 4K files or pictures. It's just, it's gonna go away really, really fast. So I would do that definitely as an upgrade. Uh, and then maybe I would upgrade the processor if you're planning on doing a lot of editing, but this base model has really held up fine for me. I was really actually pretty shocked. All right, so overall my thoughts, I feel like this isn't necessarily the product that people ask for with the price increase to $1,200 uh, and the removal of uh, the SD card slot and some other ports, but I feel like it's actually a really, really solid upgrade. You got that better screen, a significantly better, more robust build, this new gold color. I think it's a really awesome product, and I think that if you buy this product, you're gonna be exceptionally happy with it. If there's anything that I left out of this review or any questions that you still have, leave them in a comment, I'll do my best to respond. Be sure to subscribe right here so you don't miss any other content. Check out my other content right here, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.